right, let's write a justification for each step. So here they have put a proof together for us. Um, they have this picture here. We have the line ABC. We have the segment EF. They want us to prove, so here is what they should put up here, okay? Given. They need to give us a given. Given that B is the midpoint, of AC and given that AB is congruent to EF. They are wanting us to prove then that BC must also be congruent to EF. Now if you were asked to write this proof, the first thing you would do is take a look at the drawing over here. What do each of these things mean? Oh well if B is the midpoint of AC, that means it's right in the middle and it makes these into two equal pieces so that AB is the same length as BC. Okay. What does it mean if AB is congruent to EF? Well, if AB and EF are the same size, okay, that means they're the same size. So what we essentially have here is actually three lines that are exactly the same size. So BC would be congruent to EF. Why? Because B is the midpoint, which makes AB and BC the same size. AB and EF are the same, which means that if BC is the same as AB, it will also have to be the same as EF. That's kind of the thinking here. Now we have to write that out in steps and justify each step. So let's take a look at our reasons here. Here's our statements over here. We need the reasons. What's our justification for each of these things happening? Why do we know B is the midpoint of AC? That was given to us. Okay, and again, your first step typically is your given information. We were given that B is the midpoint of AC. They told us that. So our reason is given. When we get to step two, how do we know that AB is congruent to BC? How did we know that? We know that because B is the midpoint, and if it's a midpoint, it means it cuts this into two equal pieces. And so what I'm going to say here is this is the definition, DEF, of midpoint. That's what midpoint means, is that it cuts it into two equal pieces, making A, B, and B, C the same size. Step three, they said, well, A, B, and E, F are the same size. How did we know that? What's our justification? They told us that was given to us. Okay, so again, we have something from our given. And finally on step four, how do we know that BC is congruent to EF? Well, here we go. We knew AB was congruent to BC from up above, and AB was congruent to EF here. So what's our reason? Let's take a look at our nice cleaned up version. Here's one, two, three, our fourth reason, that's our transitive property. Okay, our transitive property looks like this. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. And it's easy to get transitive mixed up with substitution. But we're putting these two facts together, taking out that B, or in this case the AB that was the same in each of them, and putting them together. That's the transitive property, putting steps two and three together. This is what our proof would look like, minus all of my random scribblings, which I will <laughs> go ahead and take out. Okay, So this is a cleaned up version of this proof, given that B is the midpoint of AC and that AB is congruent to EF, we're able to prove that BC is also congruent to EF.